they're very old, like the next group rolling out here. How difficult does it get to be for you to find uh, new things to show people? Well, you hit on it earlier in the show. You know, this uh, bringatrailer.com and the Internet has, has opened up the world. In the past, it used to be more difficult. Uh, the, the TR6 I bought while I was sitting on the pit wall in Watkins Glen from uh, Paul Newman's partner, Tommy Ciccone. So, you know, that was through a relationship kind of buy. But nowadays, it's it's no fun because they're not hidden anywhere. <laughs> That's right. They're out there where everyone can see them. Our next race is taken to the track. It's Group 5A, 1947 to 1955, sports racing and GT cars. And another big field. Scheduled for 44 cars. Let's see how many roll out there. These are some of the biggest fields I've ever seen here. I think we have 52 in 3B. Mm -hmm. There's always someone to race. Over 900 applicants for positions. And out of all that, they whittled it down to somewhere around 510, 520 vehicles that have actually going to get the opportunity to compete here this weekend. We talked a little bit earlier about second generation drivers in the field. Uh, you probably know the field generally and particularly with regard to competition motorsports. There's some concern about where the drivers and enthusiasts of the futures are coming. What, what's your perspective on the state of the industry right now? Well, one, one thing we did at Amelia last year is we embraced the history of Japanese racing. For so many years, people have always looked east rather than west. But when you think of the, the um, uh, the history of Japanese race cars it goes back to 1965. Richie Ginther winning the uh, Mexican Grand Prix for Honda. Right. So, uh, you know, I grew up in a, an era where my dad drove a Chevrolet or a Pontiac, or your dad drove a, a Ford or a Mercury. Uh, the audience of the in the age 40 to 50 bracket probably grew up with Datsuns and Toyotas. So I think the the interest in cars is going to spread towards the west rather than the east and uh, we noticed a difference in, in our audience and, and we're trying to reach out to a youthful audience mm -hmm. what's the one group you want to do and a chance bucket list if you will hmm don't want to show my hand yet um, <laughs> we, we, it's a competitive uh, business yeah it, it, okay. it is a business you know <laughs> okay uh, johnny mercer once uh, uh, said when he was being interviewed that someone asked him how do you write these great songs he says you got to write them when you think of them because if you don't do it someone will do it for you so um you know we did alpha a few years ago and i i, I just love two nine alphas pre-war two nine alphas and i'd like to do that again and uh for goofy classes, we did a great advertising cars one year with the Zippo Lighter Chrysler and the Red Lobster March. I'd like to revisit that because there's a lot from our audience. We've been, been around 23 years now. They haven't seen those. Right. You, you don't want to get stale, though. you gotta, you got to have something um, fresh every year, and that's always the challenge. Yeah. Well, in a few years, you'll be talking to an entirely new generation down there at Amelia. Well, there's a lot of vehicles in here, some you might recognize, like that Mercedes right there. A lot of others, Bob, that maybe people are not so familiar with, like Allards and Tatums. There's a, there's a lot of what our colleague Alan Decadene would say are really tasty cars in this field. And proper-sized cars, too, I would say. Not too big, not too small. I think one of the concerns of everybody is in these older cars dealing with safety matters. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're running with smaller little bucket seats, not shoulder supports, head supports. Um, maybe a simple roll bar instead of a roll cage. So you really got to be um, cognizant of the fact that this is still dangerous. It still is racing, and you can get hurt yep. in it. Yep, you're going fast. A lot of these cars feature roll bars that were not part of the original design. You know, early on, back in the 50s, guys would make roll bars out of exhaust tubing just to meet the uh, <laughs> right. the, the <laughs> rule, not the spirit. All right. Looks great. Don't touch it. Yeah. There's a beautiful color, number 63, John Moat's 1950 Allard K2. You pronounce that correctly. Most people say Allard. This ain't my first rodeo, John. I mean, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the car. I forgot yeah. you. That <laughs> funk you heard wasn't you falling off the melon truck, right? <laughs> That's right. Well, here we go. Coming to the green flag. Let's listen to these engines roar.
It's rush hour at the end. Ready here, Pat. Once again, everybody threw cleanly. Everybody playing nice. That's great to see. Well, the brakes all work, too. Yeah, for now. Yeah. Early leader Dave Zerlinden in his 1953 Tatum GMC Special. Point out, most of these cars have drum brakes. Mm -hmm. That car was uh, built not too far from here, over in the Central Valley, over in Stockton, California. Here's our buddy Dyke Ridgely back again, this time in a Jaguar. Yeah, this is not unusual. Some of the car owners here have several vintage machines they like to exercise, so they'll run in multiple classes. What group will you be driving? Everybody will be with it. Pristine white with green accent, group 44, TR6. Of our guest. Yeah. Don't put any more pressure on me than I already have. <laughs> I didn't say you had to win it. <laughs> Highly unlikely. As long as everybody has a good time. That's right. But before I forget, the title of the book that Bill co wrote with Tom Cotter is called Cuba's Car Culture. Or on the internet. Yeah, we're in our, uh, I think, fourth printing. Two uh, English printings, one Spanish printing, and one uh, French printing. Great. No more checks, but they're doing a lot of printings. <laughs> you're famous. You're not well. <laughs> Correct. Watching the fight for third. I'm not so sure about the famous part. Either. Originally, he's just in front of him with his Jaguar. Parkinson special Jaguar of John Budenbaum. It's the white machine. There he is. Pulls down the position right now. Ran the Pebble Beach course back in 1950. Ran over Carroll Speedway as well in 1950. Palm Springs. Competed all around the area. Reno, Golden Gate Park, Torrey Pines, another famed Northern California road course. Mercury Special in the hands of Don Pepperdine. Once again, special means modified. There's a little fight going on here. It's Vento and his 52 Allard J2X. Going at it with the 183 there. That's Lars Mapsteed, the Jaguar XK120. As we slip back before 1950, obviously, front engine cars, once again, the rage. There goes that 300 SL Mercedes. 51 in red, John LeCarner and his 51 Allard. our Mercedes in the mix. It's hard to believe those are million dollar cars. Man. The centerpiece of just about every great car collection is a 300 SLR Goldwing. The 11 just ahead of White is Doug Salem's 52 Morgan plus four. Down the road in San Jose, California. The Mercedes ran the Tour de France back in 1957. Spent most of its racing life over in Europe. Did you know that a 300 SL won a NASCAR race? I didn't know that. I know a Jaguar won a NASCAR yeah, race. It's New Jersey, I believe. Okay. And uh, this was Rockingham, North Carolina yeah. in 1955. Carl Kiefer had a, a 300 SL going. That was one of NASCAR's experiments in sports car racing. Right. Yep. They tried some open wheel racing too, didn't they? At Darlington, for example, I believe. Yeah, Indy cars. Yep. Indy cars, yeah. Roadsters. Right. Beautiful blue, oxblood red, 53 Lancia, Bruce Trenery. 
D24. Another Morgan. Four wheel version. We talked a lot about uh, earlier, Bill, about how the drivers have to really think ahead about what they're doing with some of these vintage cars. All so different. Is this track uh, easy for that or more difficult? It's uh, it, There's some nuances to the track are very tough. Like the first time I came here, I asked Bruce Canepa, how you do the corkscrew? He says, ah, just go up straight, look for the oak tree, and turn in. You know, if you aim towards the oak tree. I'm going up straight. I don't see the oak tree. <laughs> I get to the top, and afterwards, after smoking all four wheels, and, and that showed up on Facebook before I got back to the pits. <laughs> um, he says, no, it's not at the top of the hill. So you get up, you turn in, you see an oak tree, because you can't see over the front right. of the car, and aim towards it, and the car will come down in the right spot. So that's one nuance. And then the turn after that, I don't know, I haven't figured that one out right yet. I a mean, rainy curve. Yeah, it's a... Um, it's, it's probably a late apex, but you have a tendency to try to tighten it up, and then you find yourself at the wrong side. This is pretty easy. That's rainy right there. You yep. see them coming out? You, know, you see all sorts of lines through there. <laughs> Not all of them. Good. Beautiful 51 Jag XK120. So named because it was capable of 120 miles an hour. Number then and now. Bob, we're going to pick the pace up again after this category. Six, 1970, 1984 sports racing cars under 2100 cc's. Boy, that's a knife fight of a category. Yep. All day with eight more groups. Plus all that happens in between. It's all part of our automobile coverage from here. The Rolex Monterey Motorsports Reunion. Back again, as Bob mentioned, to do it from here at Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca. And you'll also be able to see Bob and his gang from Pebble Beach tomorrow as well. I can switch back and forth. Got a battle here, Bruce Trenery. Yeah, it's showing about 13th and 14th position. Called that a 300 SLR earlier. It's an SL going. That's correct. The SLRs were eight cylinder cars, and there were very few of them built. They were the Grand Prix car and sports car, like Sterling Moss one that you know, we The going car looks so great and it's so iconic, but it's a little warm inside that cockpit, isn't it? Really warm. Yeah. yeah. They didn't think of ventilation much. No. They can't roll the windows down because of the door, the door design. Right. Of Sir Sterling, he's a regular here at the Mazda Raceway with the Seca event and at your Amelia Island affair. How's he doing these days? Um, he was hospitalized. Yeah, he was week. hospitalized for about three months in uh, Singapore with a lung infection. He's home now and resting. Okay. And I got a note from uh, Susie the other day. He's got good care. You know, he's 85 years old. So. Yeah. And he goes at a pace that 45-year-olds don't Right, wear. exactly. He is made of sterner stuff for sure. Boy, that's a great-looking car. In just about every color, too, right? You know, you talk about how hard it is to find those cars. Uh, I found one in a, in a warehouse in Jacksonville. And the last time I saw it was when I was 18 years old. I'm 74 now, and I saw it two weeks ago and hadn't moved. Huh. Really? Yeah. Wow. Folks who want to know about it, don't call me. <laughs> I think that's one of the things that a lot of people wonder about as we continue to watch our battles here in this category is how do you find those things, those barn finds? I know Tom's made a career out of it. I've been real lucky. I found the ex-Denny Home Brabham BT-8, which won the tourist trophy in 1976 in a South Carolina junkyard. And then the guy called me two, two years later. I paid 20 for it. So he called me two years later. He had the Lang Cooper, which had run here at Laguna Seca, which was Shelby King Cooper. So you and some somebody like uh, Jay Leno or Wayne Carini, they get calls every day on cars.
being a, a TV personality is a great way to find cars, but they're all out there. Yep. We found a, I found a, a 1928 Chevrolet Special that was built right on the beach in Daytona in 1920, 28, 29. It was eight miles from my house for 60 years. Wow. So they're out there. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. Part of the. Yeah, you get in the network, cars start finding you. Right. Fan stream, isn't it? That's another great looking car. This said GMC special that we talked about from over in Stockton. Just like the way that sits on the road, a bit of a high ride, high, but it may be deceptive optically because of the dark metal stripe across the bottom, makes it look like it's. In a lot of cases, you have to look at the car with the eyes of, of the, the time that it was built. Right. And in a case like that, you know, it's an individual in his garage for months on end. The vision of what he wanted to do with it, that's what you get. I told Tom Cotter, we don't need to do a book about the cars in the barn. We need a book about the cars that got away. Right. Like the, the RS60 Spider in San Francisco that I wouldn't pay $13,500 for. I take 12.5 or I'm leaving. And I left and <laughs> the rest is history. <laughs> the fact that it was a second place Sebring car has nothing, nothing to do, to do with it. it. Good battle still yep. going here as well. Mercedes just wheeling it, sliding a little bit. Coming out of 10. This tire's getting a little hot now, Bob. That 55 Mercedes be independence, independent suspension, or has that got a... Roadsters were. The coupes weren't. No, so he's got a spool in there. Yeah. Actually, for an everyday car, for years it took people a long time to figure out the Roadster is a better car for every day. Mm -hmm. The Gullwing is what you want to trailer to win a mile or where you want to be seen and then open the doors and impress everybody. Right. They're terrific cars, don't get me wrong, but yeah. the, roads, the Roadster was the better of the two for a driver. Bruce Trenery at Emeryville, California, still chasing this guy here. Our race leader, Zerlinden. He lives over in Monterey, so he's not going to have to go far to get home to celebrate tonight. Laps are counting down. One to go. He's driving that car with a lot of spirit. Wide entry into the double apex hairpin down there. Looks like the 24 has slipped back. Bruce Trenery has a professional racing background, as I recall. I remember that name from some entry lists back in the days of IMSA Road Racing. He had an old Cutlass with the roof cut off the top of it. I forget what they called it. It, it was worthy of forgetting, and even he admits <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah, but he had the only one. That's right. <laughs> Should be seeing the checkered flag at the completion of this lap, and then we'll be moving on to those much quicker sports racing under 2100 cc machinery is coming up next. If you've ever followed a, an Allard or a Healy Silverstone, you you notice when they go through a corner that no two wheels seem to point in the same direction. <laughs> Comes our race leader. And off the mountain for the final time. So that's another example of the national chassis with a great big American lump under the hood. That's been pretty much a Sunday drive on Saturday for this gentleman. To the line and the checkered flag. Dave Zerlinden. Winner of race 5A. That puts us more than halfway through our schedule here on day one.
Hansen holds it right now in the 51 to see. Vento trying to catch him. He's got about half a lap to get it done. Not from there, I'm afraid. Well, let's see what happens in the corks group. And the Mercedes still tagging along. Last time through rainy curve into turn 10. You can always take it a little bit faster than you think you can with that little bit of banking. Flat turn 11. And hard on the gas to the flag. Nento will take the position in 13. Followed by Trenary and Curtis. And there's your winner. Local favorite. Car from right here in Stockton and the driver from Monterey come together and win here at Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca. Well, Bill, thanks for coming by. Awesome. We Bob, all look forward to seeing you at Amelia Island in March, right? Yeah, yeah. Look forward to seeing you. I know I'll be down there and we'll have a good time. And just pray for good weather, that's all. We'll be right back for more from the Rolex Monterey Motorsports Reunion.